I'm going to highlight the one. I'm going to highlight the zero because we need to emphasize these are limits of integration. Limits of integration for x. Big deal. Very, very important concept to conceptually understand. This is all written in terms of x. I got a dx going on here. All right, these are limits of in integration for x. Okay, now if we're doing u substitution, eventually I end up writing somewhere over here an integral in terms of u. So I'm no longer in terms of x. I have to get rid of those two numbers right now as we are beginning to learn this when I'm using my u equation because they are not the same. Okay, so we're going to do just like we always have when we initially start here. Okay, we're going to say, okay, we're going to let. All right, so where's the inside most part of the function? The x squared plus 1, so that's where we want to go for our u. All right, and then we have, I haven't really said much about it today, but then in your head, when you take the derivative of x squared, you get 2x, which means that x is going to go away, so it's a good thing. Okay, so we're on the right track. All right, we're going to go a du is equal to a 2x, and then a dx. We'll solve all the way down for dx. So we'll have a du over a 2x. Okay, then we always come up here and we start doing our substitutions. All right, this is crucial. I'm going to have an integral. I am not going to put anything here and I am not going to put anything there because the 0 and 1 can only be used when I have all x's and what I what am I about ready to do I'm about ready to mix up my x's and u's I'm going to leave this x I'm going to replace this with my u and I'm going to replace this with a du over 2x Okay, so at this point, I have a jumbled mess. I don't have an equation in terms of anything, really. I'm just doing some work here. I've got u's, I've got x's, but you cannot put your limits of integration for x here because you don't have an entire equation written in terms of x. Okay, so very, very important thing. Okay, now we're going to cross out our x's, and then what are we going to pull out in front? Yep, we're going to pull out that one half out in front. Okay, so we're going to pull the one half out in front. And then I'll have a u to the third du. Now I am 100% in terms of u. All right, so right now, since we are at the beginning, we're not going to have any numbers at the top and bottom. No numbers. Do not write the zero and one there. A little bit later, I will show you how to change limits of integration for x and change them to limits of integration for u and we will put different numbers here okay but right here at the beginning let's just learn okay we got to take rid of we got to get rid of them because they're limits of integration for x okay so we're going to integrate like normal okay let's see uh we'll have the one half sitting out in front um let's see add one to the exponent i'll have a u to the fourth that'll give me a one fourth in front Okay, and then I, I usually go ahead and put my plus C there because I'm doing an indefinite integral at that point. Okay, now when I go back in terms of X, I am going to clean it up a little bit. I'm going to take that one half and that one fourth and go ahead and multiply it. All right, so I'm going to multiply one eighth and then I'm going to substitute my U back in. So an X squared plus a one to the fourth power. Okay, now. Am I all in terms of x? So can I now evaluate based on my limits of integration for x? So I can legally now at this point put back in the 0 and the 1 because those are limits of integration for x and I'm finally back in to a form that is just x. Okay. Let's plug some things in. Oh, this is going to be kind of easy. I plug in 1. 1 squared is 1, plus 1 more is 2, 2 to the 4th. 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 is 8 times 2 is 16. Okay, and then 16 over 8 is 2. 
All right, then we're going to subtract. We're going to plug in our zero. Okay, so zero squared plus one is one to the fourth. Still one times one eighth, so one eighth. So 15 eighths, because that'd be 16 over eight. So 15 over eight. I mean, without a calculator, we don't need to go to a decimal. 15 over eight, because this would be 16 over eight. Okay, so the whole emphasis of that was I really, and, and like, so what am I going to do? I will, obviously, you're going to write this. I'm going to check this right here. I will look for your mess that's got both X's and U's, and I'm going to look and make sure you don't have numbers there. If you've got numbers there, I'm going to probably take a point off right there. When you get all in terms of U, again, I'm going to look specifically here. Do you not have any? Because you're not supposed to. You'll probably get a point for this line. Going from here to here, you'll get a point because I'm checking the integration at that point. And then when you plug it back in, then I'm going to look to see, did you put back in the 0 and 1 because you're in terms of X? And then final answer. Okay. All right. But like I said, this, I mean, it works. Works perfectly. All right. I just know that, you know, like at some universities like Purdue and stuff, when my children were going through there, they were really picky about those limits of integration for X. Couldn't be here. Okay. So I want to emphasize that. Now, there is some merit to changing the limits of integration to limits of integration for you because if I change these two numbers here then as soon as I integrate this expression is sometimes easier to evaluate than this so it makes the work a little bit easier it makes the arithmetic a little bit easier when you have limits of integration for you because isn't um, you know even a 1 8 u to the fourth more simple than an x squared plus 1 to the fourth See, so it will be to our advantage, all right? But I want to practice this for a while.